I have a love-hate relationship with testimonials. I think they are so fake. So if you can do it well, it can really give credence to your website. And what I mean by do it well is get real life images of customers in your shop and make sure that they give true statements, not some, you know, babble that they manufactured from somewhere on chat GPT. Say something like my husband and I, we've been coming here since the shop opened. It's been a legend in our community. You know, really get to the heart of it. I don't want to go into testimonials because it's one of the things that I really don't want to add to any website. But at the same time, I find myself when I visit unfamiliar sites, to, I'm checking out the testimonials. I want to see, you know, if these people are actually telling me something. We also call it social proof. It's a good way to convince people that this is legit. This is the deal. So we add a testimonial here. By the way, my name is JB. Welcome to Websites for Beginners in this crash course for building out your website from a zero to a semi-hero. Let's click on add a new block. Select create your own. The first thing we'll bring in is an image for the person's face. You can see because we're working in this big open area of canvas, this is a massive image. Below that, I'm going to bring in a quote from this person. Below that, I'll have a line separator. I'll bring in where's line. Under that, I'll add a spacer and then I'll bring in more text for the person's name. All of that is in here. Click on the image and then we select our first image from the gallery. And if you cannot see it, just scroll down, click on image. And this is our first person over here. Testimonial number one and select. And you're going to see it's going to look really bad. Even if I put it on original, it still looks bad because I've created this image very small. I don't need it this big. So to reduce the image, simple, click on it and you will see in the bottom corners we have these arrows handles that you can drag. So I'll click and hold and drag and I'm going to make it very, very tiny. You also can do that from the settings here. You have percentage. So I can just, let's say, a round number of 10. I feel this is too big. I really want this not to be that in your face, but let's just keep it 10% for this tutorial. Now I have a square. I want to make it a nice little circle. And there is an awesome feature that you can do that with in the image settings. Go all the way to the left and you see up here called a mask. And a mask is a shape that you apply over the image like a cookie cutter and cutting it out. So the shape is the first shape that we'll be using, and that is a circle. But just have a look. There are quite a number of them. Oops. And you can go through them and see maybe one of these shapes can work for you. Do you want me to use a different shape than a circle like this one? Nah, let's use a circle for now and stick to the tutorial. Click on circle and put the size to fit. You're not going to see any changes here but it's good to put it on fit, which means that the shape will fit perfectly into our area. And that's it. We brought in the image, we reduced it, we applied a mask, it looks perfect. Next, we're going to add a little bit of a testimonial here. And you can add the mumbo jumbo that they will give you. I love the food and coffee at the, what is it called? The cosmic, no, the organic. Organic Cafe. This has been a jewel in the neighborhood. I should neighborhood and my fondest memories. As a kid, I got from this shop. OK, we can go on forever with that. Let's style it out. Let's go to T4 Topography. And I'll increase this to around 18. Let's even make it 20. Reduce the line height to 1.7. That just looks better. I like this gray, which is applied the second swatch from the right. Then I'll align it to the middle. And I'll select italics here. It's very easy to usually put it on italics. Makes a good impression you know, when you are doing something like a testimonial. You can see that this sentence runs just too far for us. So we want to bring things a little bit closer to each other, force a few line breaks. Do you remember how to do that? The block, go to the block settings, 
and then reduce the width. Let's type in there 75 and see how that will look. That's nice. You did see what happened when I typed in 75. Let me put it back on 100. You see it also shrinks the image because the image is set to a percentage. So it's going to always be in relation to the block settings. Let's go back to the block, type in 75. So in this case, I think now the image is maybe too small. So what I'll do, it's still 10%. I'll just increase it a little bit. Okay, 12, 13. There's that three again. We just cannot get away from it. Um, mm, okay, right, this is good. And then on the line, we're going to do something really fancy with the line. Again, I'm surprised that this is a free feature. You don't get it in other builders. Go to the line settings all the way to the left and select this one with the little star. And look at that, a little icon just pops right in there. Select icon next to the line tab. And then you're at the top where you see the icon, click on that. And then we search here for heart. I wonder if we can search for coffee. I didn't check. Ooh. Mm -hmm. ah, it's a coffee shop. Let's go for the coffee mug. I wanted to use the heart to show that we want to show the love. But in this case, I'm going to go for the coffee mug. Very tiny. So let's go to the size and we can increase it with the slider. Or you can use one of these presets. 24. 24 is nice. Spacing will give that little bit of white space between the mug and the line. And you can even rotate it. Heaven knows why. You want to show you are drinking it? Nah, let's keep it on zero degrees. Back to the line. Nothing we want to change here. I think that is fine. And we can change the color of the icon. So click on the colors. And you see here we have the icon. So let's go choose one of the colors. I want to use something from one of these images. Select the color picker and shall we go with something a little bit more yeah I like that so I chose a color from this wooden placemat saucer for that chai latte nice look at that what we did there click on the spacer drag it down a little bit and then below here we're going to add a name I think at this point just quickly want to talk about what we are doing with the images and the text it is a good idea to create a dummy website every time you want to set it up and then bring in your content later. It helps you to visualize how your website is going to look and play out. So we use a lot of dummy text, placeholder text, and we use these images. If you are creating this coffee shop for your friend downstairs, you're definitely not going to use these images. It's not related to their website. And I hate seeing images on a site that I know that's not real for that concern. The idea though of stock photos like this from FreePic is that they are great, number one, for backgrounds like the one we have at the top. Second, they are good for other design elements. And third, they are used for placeholders and the same for text. So when you get into the situation where you need placeholder images, stock sites like FreePic, and the free guys like Unsplash, Pixels, Pixabay, all great. Raw Pixel is another one that you can go check out. And then when it comes to text, we have a number of ways. We can, our most popular one is to use a text generator called Lorem Ipsum. I'm not going to go into that because for this tutorial, I've used real text. But if you ever run into names, if you want to come up with people's names and you just cannot think of names and you don't want to use your friends' names, there is a great little link for that. I'll just go here. Let's open a new one. And that is called fakenamegenerator.com. Fakenamegenerator.com. Brilliant. And then you can choose here the gender. We have a female here. What the name, the origin of the name. So if I want to make this one French, I'm going to select French. And if you want to you see, you are going to generate so many statistics over here. I'm only interested in the name. So I'll click on Generate. And then we have Claire Desrousseaux. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I'll just go ahead and copy it. Copy. Good. Then we go back. Our text is selected and we paste it. Let's click back on this and then select all the text. I'll put it on Roboto and it's bold. It's a 28. It brought in the 28 from the fake text generator. Um, no, we're going to put it on caveat brush. Uh, 20, 
3, I think, is fine. Ledger spacing, we're going to put on 0. And you see it has activated bold here. Again, it's bringing in the settings from the site, which we don't want. So I'll deactivate bold. Let's put it in the middle. Nice. And let's use the same color as this little mug. So I'll click here on my little selector. And we go to the mug. Come on, little mug. I cannot get the mug. Let me try again. Where is... Okay. So what I'll do, instead of doing that, I'll click again on the icon or the line. Go to the icon. And in the box, I'll copy this code. Then I'll go to our name. And I cannot see it because it's on white. Select it and copy it. And there we go. Place Claire de Rousseau. Claire de Rousseau. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Nice. I'm going to leave it. This is great. This is the testimonial that we want. Before we go and create the second and the third slide. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. Here we have it like so. I've done it completely differently. That's what happens. I have the line there, etc. What we have here is a block slider. The entire block is sliding. So we want to duplicate this and then create a few more testimonials. Like the one we did previously, before we duplicate it, we're going to go back to our tablet and mobile and make sure it looks good on those devices first. So let's select tablet. And I want to make the image bigger. Click on it, just drag it a little bit bigger. I want to make this smaller, the text area. So I go to text, or I mean the size, 18, and I'll reduce it to 1.6. And the rest I'm pretty happy with. Maybe a little bit space at the top, a little bit more space at the bottom. And we can add more space on the left and right. So the block settings is set to 75%. Let's move that to 85%. JP, how did you get to 85%? Mm. No idea. I just made a guess. That's what I like. I'll just make the image a little bit smaller now. Now, next is the mobile. So you can hit Control minus, Command minus to go down to mobile. And this looks a little bit gnarly. The first thing I'll do, remember on mobile, I told you to go for the width at 100%. So let's choose that first. And we're going to change it very soon to your surprise. But I'll, I want you to understand what will happen. And that light just went down. Batteries. Let's make the image bigger. Text, we put it on 16. Reduce to 1.6. And this spacer, I'm going to make invisible because I don't need all of that space. And then I'll add space at the top. And then to the bottom, I go and add space here as well. So let's do a little bit more. This is a mobile device after all. Good. Let's go back to desktop, save our work, Control S, Command S. And now we're going to make it a block slider. Go to the block settings all the way to the left and select block. And then you see here, we have the option to make it a slider. Observe what happens the moment I activate it. It duplicates this one and gives us another navigation dot here at the bottom. And it gives us navigation arrows on the left and the right. And what essentially has happened is that Brizzy has duplicated this, given us two exact copies, two slides that are exact copies, but we can make changes now. Here is how you can trust me on this. Click on the second dot so that it is selected like so. Click on the image, and then we replace this image by deleting that one and bringing in our second person. And now, as I go through it, you will see we have our block slider and you can change out the content. But let me go and show you what has happened on tablet and mobile. Select tablet. And tablet looks good. So no need to make changes here. But when we go to mobile, the navigation arrows give us a problem. Sliders are infamously a problem on mobile devices, again, because of the space constraint. Now, what we're going to do here, let's just make sure we select the first one. You can click here on the dot with this lady, with Claire. Let's choose the block settings, and we will constrain the width. So I'll drag in the width until I get it quite a bit in. Because this is a cell phone device, this space is not a problem if we you know, stack them that high on top of each other. 
but we want to add enough space between the arrows here. Let me just see again. Okay, I'm going to, let's make that 60%. So we constrain it to 60%. Click on the image and then make it bigger. And let's reduce a little bit of the space at the top. Now the image is too big. There we go. And space at the bottom. But this only applies to this slide. If I slide now to the next one, you will see the old settings still apply. So how can I make sure it applies to all of the slides? To copy my little trick from the previous tutorial where we did the image gallery, I'll go back to desktop. Then I will select the second slide. Now this slide is the one that doesn't work well on mobile. I'll go to the slide block settings in the top right corner and select delete. This will delete this slide, but keep the original slide. This one is perfect for tablet, mobile, and desktop. Now I go ahead and copy it. So select copy. Global slider is still active. So by clicking on copy, it created the second one. Click on the second one, change out the image. And we put her back. And by doing so, when I go now to mobile, you're going to see that the settings have been kept. And now I can go ahead and duplicate it again. Let's select the last one with her, duplicate the block slide, select the third one and change out the image to the guy. And our block slider is done. You can change the names. I've given you a fake name generator and your slider is done. I know it seems like a lot of back and forth. We never had to do this. I, I even want to say five years ago, actually, when Brizzy first came out, we, we didn't even have access to design in mobile device. Mobile came out a little bit after it was released. Tablet came out much later. And now we're waiting for something we call breakpoints. I hope that very soon the breakpoints will be released and that I can show you what you can do with breakpoints because that's going to really elevate your responsive design. So a little bit of back and forth depending on what you're doing, but the ways that I've shown you for both this image gallery here and the block slider are ways that are gonna save you a lot of time. If you forget to do that at the beginning and later you come back and you make changes to one, you will have to go into each and every little part of all the others and change them as well. And sometimes then it's just better to start all over again. Are we done here? We're done with this one, but we still have a contact form, which we're going to tackle in the next tutorial.